Hello, it's Greg Charest, and I'm here to teach you about some software called Loopback. Loopback is made by a company called Rogue Amoeba, and that company has made a piece of software that is for Macs only. So I'm sorry, PC people, this doesn't apply to you, but perhaps you'd be interested to see what's possible because I'm sure that something similar is available for your, uh, your platform. Um, what we're looking at here is essentially what would what would happen if you were to open the software for the first time. I'm going to operate under the assumption that you know how to install software. So uh, once you go to Rogue Amoeba's website and download Loopback and install, the first time you open it, you'll be given a Loopback audio device, which is here in this left-hand column. These other two devices, these virtual devices, will not exist for you. Those are something that I've created and I'm currently using. And I'm going to leave this off for the purposes of the video because your audio source is actually coming here from this QuickTime screen video. Okay, so enough about that. Here's what this software does. We're going to make an audio device. In other words, we're going to trick your computer into believing that all of the sources of audio on your entire computer are one thing. Your computer is going to think that all of these sources of audio are basically a microphone. So what we need to do is we can, first of all, we can label this. Let's make a, um, a junior high band audio device. And I'm going to call it that because my junior high band meets uh, at the end of the day and fully virtually. So they meet 100% from home. I never see them in person. Sad. I know. Uh, they uh, need to have some tools, and one of the tools I need them uh, to hear is my voice. So under Sources, I'm going to click the Add button, and I have my Yeti stereo microphone plugged in via USB. So I'm going to select that. That's an audio source. Uh, I want the ability to play my piano for them, which you can hear, but as of right now, they would not be able to hear. I have a USB keyboard controller plugged in, and I'm using main stage three. Again, this is a Mac, so that's my uh, my audio engine for MIDI. I want them to be able to hear a YouTube video or the audio, at least the audio from a YouTube video. I will be able to share my screen in Zoom or in Google Meets, but I want them for sure to hear the audio. Uh, and so I'm going to select Google Chrome as an audio source. Uh, the final aspect of this is that uh, Zoom, which is currently running on my computer, is going to need to be an audio source because I'm going to need to be able to hear the students. Speaking of which, the other thing that we need to install into this software is a monitor. And um, anything that is plugged in right now that can uh, accept sound as a monitor can be chosen. So I happen to have my headphones plugged into the Yeti stereo microphone. But uh, let's say alternatively for uh, the purposes of, if, let's just pretend I was in the band room for a minute teaching synchronously to students at home and in school, I might want to play audio over the, uh, over the band room stereo. So this is going to allow me to also plug in a cord to my computer's headphone jack and then route that into the PA system in the band room. Um, you can see that every time I add a device, it adds these, these teal green or blue lines. Uh, those are effectively wires, and the wires can be made, you can highlight them and get a little bit bold, and you can actually delete them if you wish. Uh, and the opposite is true, you can make connections. So what I did was I just clicked on sort of this, it looks like a, it's a circle, it looks like a port, and I'm just clicking and dragging from one side to the other, and that uh, makes, makes your life very quick and easy. Uh, drag and drop. Uh, one thing I can tell you, or another thing I can tell you I should say, is that if this was for a fully virtual meeting, I would have one small problem, and this is something that I've learned through trial and error, that is that um, I, I don't want to be able to hear the audio of my voice again, and because the Yeti stereo microphone is an audio source here, it's going to send the audio from what I'm speaking uh, back into the microphone. And it won't be the microphone, it'll be my headphones, but I'll hear a slight delay of my own voice. That's kind of annoying. So I can create a bypass for that. I'm going to go here to the center to output channels. I'm going to add some more uh, output channels here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these cables, these virtual cables here. 
from the Yeti stereo microphone and I'm going to route the audio from channels 3 and 4 into there. And I'm going to put all of the audio into channels 3 and 4. Again, click on the circle and drag. I'm going to do that for everything except my microphone. Here's the microphone. I'm going to avoid that. Zoom audio. I'll be able to hear the kids speaking to me through my headphones. And if you didn't notice this already, uh, this little pass-through device at the bottom here is the whole point of loopback. You need that and it automatically wires itself up and just leave that alone. That's the easiest thing for you to, to know about that. So this is going to set it up for me that any of my audio can go into the external headphone jack. It could also potentially, if I wanted it to, go into my computer speakers if I needed to. Uh, the other beauty about having all of these things here is, and I'm sure you may have seen this already, is that I can turn each individual device on and off and all of the devices have their own individual volume control. So that is also true, by the way, of the inputs. So if I want Google Chrome to be just like a little bit softer in, in, uh, in everyone's ears, I can turn the audio down. Okay, let's put this into practice. We've created this virtual device, but now we need to actually use it. So a couple things are worth noting here. I'm going to start up a Zoom meeting and I'm going to show you what I would do if I was creating a Zoom meeting. I've got the setup on a different screen, but let's see if this starts. I'm going to drag my window over so that you can see it. Hi. <laughs> and so this is, this is a one person Zoom meeting, except to say hello to you. When you are in Zoom, you have the opportunity down here, and it says I'm, I'm muted right now in, the, uh, in this meeting, but you have the opportunity to click on this arrow and to choose. So, for example, if I wanted the audio to come from my external camera, uh, then I could choose the camera's audio. And you can see right now the audio is coming from QuickTime screen video. That is, if you can see to the left-hand side of the screen here, that is the audio source I'm using to record this, this particular video. And what you don't see is the junior high band audio device. But if I turn that device on, it should show in the, the, uh, into Zoom as an audio source. So if I'm going to have that meeting, I need to for sure, pardon me, main stage is a little twitchy right now, but um, I can choose to have my microphone be junior high band. So Zoom thinks that everything that we just put, everything that we just put into loopback, Zoom thinks is my microphone. I am also able to route the audio into any number of places, but I find that this works the best if I choose the same output. And that's because, if you recall, I set up all these monitors here. And so your Zoom meeting now can have all of that audio. If I was on YouTube, and uh, you know that I'm, I have a, a YouTube video ready in the background here, okay? The, the kids at home, they can hear that audio. I don't need to screen share for that to be present. Let's stop that for a minute. I don't need to screen share for that to be present. That doesn't need to be uh, part of what I'm doing. It's possible to screen share all of those things. I can choose to share my, you know, Google Chrome, the foundation warm ups, but the kids can hear it. So if they had paper sheet music at home, but you wanted them to hear the audio to play along and see you if you were conducting, that can be a solution for you. Uh, in the past, if you wanted them to hear that, you would have to choose music or computer sound only. Because Zoom thinks my microphone is that virtual audio device we created, we don't need to click share. You can automatically hear all of those things. So I'm going to end this meeting right here. I'm going to send you on your way. We are going to uh, just talk quickly. One, one final detail here about this is that uh, when you are setting all of these up, you definitely are able to choose between these audio sources, I will caution you that when you are working with these virtual wires, these teal blue green wires here, it is very easy to delete them. There's a delete button or virtual button down here on the left, but it's also right next to this minus sign. There's a plus sign for new virtual device. 
but if you collect that minus sign, it deletes the virtual device and there's no undo for that. So once you accidentally delete those, they're gone. Luckily, it's pretty easy to set up and you can always come back to this video to learn how to do that all over again if you need it. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care.